Chapter 3 of Hosea from the Holy Bible with original notes by Thomas Scott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Lord's intended future kindness to Israel, notwithstanding their wickedness, illustrated by the emblem of Hosea's conduct toward his adulterous wife. Verses 1 to 5. Verse 1. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. Verse 2. So I bought her to me for fifteen pieces of silver, and for an homer of barley, and an half homer of barley. Verse 3. And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days, thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man, so will I also be for thee. Verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without teraphim. Verse 5. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God, and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Notes. Verses 1 to 3. Some interpret this as a vision or parable which the prophet spake to the people, but they who consider it as a fact have some hesitation in deciding whether it related to Hosea's former wife or to another woman on whom he was to fix his affections. It seems, however, most probable that it is the continuation and conclusion of the prophet's account of this transaction, with which his prophetical office began, and which was a picture of the Lord's dealing with Israel. He had married a woman of bad character, and had treated her with affection and kindness. Yet she afterwards became an adulteress, and departed from him. She had been beloved of her friend and husband, but proved unfaithful, yet he continued to love her, and he was directed to go and show his love by his conduct towards her. Instead of a public prosecution or a private divorce, he went with overtures of reconciliation, and only required that she would remain in a state of separation from him for many days a competent time to evince the sincerity of her repentance, and that she would no more renew her adulteries but reserve herself for him, and then he promised to consider himself as her husband, and at length to take her back to him. The money and the barley with which he bought her to him, accorded to the customs of those times, when they often gave dowries for, instead of receiving them with their wives. This implied that the marriage had been virtually dissolved by her adulteries, and perhaps it served or was intended for her maintenance during the days of her seclusion, and to keep her from the temptation of becoming a harlot for subsistence. And the small sum of money, about one pound seventeen shillings sixpence, and the coarseness of the provisions, being barley, not wheat, might denote the disgraced and abject condition to which her sin had reduced her, and might intimate that she ought to submit to present inconveniences, and wait patiently the time of being restored to favour, we may conclude from the things signified by this transaction that she submitted to the terms, was received again by the prophet, and behaved better afterwards. For this was according to the love of the Lord for the children of Israel. Some interpret this almost wholly of the kingdom of Israel, but the prophecy seems to require us to understand it of the whole people descended from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They had been espoused to the Lord in the wilderness, notwithstanding their idolatries in Egypt, and yet, after all the displays of his love to them, through their successive generations, they were always prone to fix their eyes on base idols. This was adultery, a violation of their marriage covenant. They also loved flagons of wine. They were attached to idol worship, because in it they gave unbridled license to their sensual appetites. But the Lord still had love for the nation, and though he meant to deprive them of their privileges, exclude them from his church for many days, and to debase and reduce them to great distress, yet they would still subsist as a distinct people, and at length be anew betrothed to him, and reinstated in his favour, and the full enjoyment of their privileges. The words which our translation renders flagons of wine may be translated cakes made of grapes. Such were the cakes, probably, which the Jews offered to the Queen of Heaven. Jeremiah 7 verse 18 44 verse 19. The expression signifies in general those entertainments which they were partakers of in the idol temples. Loth. Verses 4 and 5. The kingdom of Israel was soon after this entirely ruined, and the people were incorporated either with the Jews or the nations among whom they resided, and have had neither king, prince, priest, sacrifice, or religious establishment from that day to this. 
The Jews remained for several years without these advantages during the Babylonish captivity, yet their civil and religious constitution was again restored. But since the rejection of that nation at the introduction of Christianity and the destruction of their city and temple by the Romans, they have continued to this time, for much above 1700 years, without king or prince of their own nation, and without priest or sacrifice, or anything substituted in the place of the temple worship. And, what is still more remarkable, they have also remained without an image, ephod, or teraphim, without any of those idolatrous observances and apparatus to which they were so generally attached when this prophecy was uttered. From the time of the destruction of Jerusalem by Vespasian, to this day, they have had no civil government of their own, but live everywhere as so many exiles, only upon sufferance. They have had neither priests nor sacrifice, their temple being destroyed, where only they were to offer sacrifice. And yet the want of a place where to perform the most solemn part of their public worship does not tempt them to idolatry, which was the epidemic sin of their forefathers. Loath. This is surely a most astonishing prophecy of events directly contrary to all human probability, yet undeniably taking place, not on a particular occasion or for a short time, but through very many revolving centuries. How could Hosea have foreseen this had not God inspired him? And does not this demonstrate, in the only way by which such things can be demonstrated, the divine inspiration of this prophecy and of those by whom it is quoted? It was also predicted that afterwards they should return from their state of rejection and unbelief, and seek the Lord their God and David their King. This even their own writers explained of the promised Messiah, and doubtless it foretold their future conversion to Christ, for which they are evidently preserved a separate people, neither a part of the true church, nor yet given up to spiritual adultery, but put aside on a separate scanty maintenance, in a debased condition for a long time, like Hosea's wife, to be at length received to favour again. It is added, They shall fear the Lord and his goodness. The discovery which these events shall make of the Lord's goodness and of his unmerited kindness and mercy to them in Christ Jesus will fill them with reverential awe of him, and a fear of offending so kind a friend, and will fix their hearts in the spiritual worship of him and conscientious obedience of his commandments. This would be in the latter days under the gospel dispensation at that approaching period when they shall be converted to Christ, and gathered from their present dispersions. Practical Observations When we consider the ingratitude and folly even of believers, their frequent hankerings after and idolatrous attachment to worldly objects and essential gratifications, which is proportionably an unfaithfulness to God and a departure from Him, we shall admire His persevering love to them, almost as much as his condescension and compassion to sinners in the glorious salvation provided for them, and the price with which it was purchased. And as far as consists with other duties, we should copy his example in our readiness to forgive, and be reconciled to those who have most ungratefully and grossly injured us. The dislike of men to true religion arises from their preference of sensual to spiritual pleasures. They therefore love an object and a form of worship which allow them to indulge instead of requiring them to mortify their lusts. But he will cure the objects of his special love of these base propensities. He will rebuke, disgrace, and afflict them for their sins. He will unite his overtures of reconciliation and tokens of love with various humiliating dispensations. He will bring them to repentance, to submit to correction, to separate from sin and worldly idols, and patiently to wait for him. And when they are thus willing to reserve themselves for him alone, he will give himself to them as their God and portion. The objects of his special love are often left for a time in a state of humiliating desertion, without any comfortable communion with him, in order to prove their faith and patience. Many of them live a great while in an unconverted state, Yet are they restrained from such crimes as would utterly ruin them, or prevent them from filling up their appointed stations in the church. In due season they are brought to seek the Lord, to trust in the divine Saviour, and to rejoice in his holy comfort. And though their first fear of God arise from a view of his terrible holy majesty, and his righteous and powerful vengeance, yet the discovery of his goodness and his love to sinners through Jesus Christ, and the experience of his mercy and grace, sweetly lead their hearts to a filial reverence of so kind and glorious a friend and father, to an habitual fear of offending and dishonouring him, a dread of his frown and correcting rod, and an adoring awe of him, when they present their worship and services before him. May we, who live in these latter days, thus fear the Lord and his goodness, 
and may both Jews and Gentiles thus seek and worship the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. End of chapter 3